Hello everybody, I'm Danielle Stewart and I'm here with Brandon Dorner and we're still talking about the Start Here class. So Brandon, where did we leave off last week? So we're on our, our, our fourth and final class of, of Start Here, so if you've missed the previous Sundays, I uh, recommend you go back and take a look at it because we are in a series of, of classes here. So uh, just to recap, what we're doing is we're taking in the Start Here class, we take Baptist and we use an acrostic and we break down each letter and connect it to the doctrine. I know that sounds difficult, but essentially what we're doing is taking each letter and bringing it down to the doctrine. So the first class, the B, was biblical authority. The second class was autonomy of the local church, which is the A, and also the P, priesthood of the believer. And then we were at uh, T, which is the, the two ordinances, our two ordinances are baptism and the Lord's table. We have I, we covered I, which is individual soul liberty. And now we're down to the last two letters, which is the S and the T. And um, so... So what are the S and T, Brandon? <laughs> so the, uh, the, the S is uh, saved or regenerate uh, church membership. And then the T is uh, two offices, uh, pastor elder and uh, or pastor shepherd here. And deacons. So that's what we're going to cover today. Um, and let's, you know, Danielle, let's just, you know, dive right into this and let's talk about uh, saved or regenerate church membership. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Danielle, how did you and your family become members of the church here at church First Baptist? Well, when we moved here in 2010, um, my husband and I had been living in Lexington, Kentucky, and we were members of a church down there. So we moved by letter of the intent of um, coming here. At that time, we had three smaller children, and at that, um, over the years, all of them have then since come to know the Lord, and they have been saved within our church. They have been saved and, and, baptized. and baptized here. Okay. Yes. All right, well, good, because um, that's important to understand that uh, here at First Baptist Church, we know, and, and we know that there are people who have attended church all their life, but may have never been baptized. And we know that that does exist. But at First Baptist Church, if you want to become a member here, we have three ways of doing that. And one is conversion and baptism. Uh, and that is uh, simply one way that, that I became a member here at church is, is through baptism back in 2012. Uh, we have transfer membership, which is uh, the way my wife became a member here at the church was uh, through a letter of transfer from her, her previous church that she grew up in. And then we also have a personal testimony, a statement of your salvation uh, and, uh, and, and also the baptism. So that is um, the, the S, which is save church membership. And again, we want to reiterate the importance of if, if, you're, if you're trying to figure out where your home is, that's the importance of this class. We want to make sure when you attend the start here class that, that you're comfortable in, in knowing what the doctrine that's being preached here in the church is, is coming uh, uh, consistently throughout Sunday school, but also the pulpit as well. And we just, we hope that uh, if you are in that stage in life trying to decide on a church, uh, we certainly hope that, that we can make you feel comfortable and call First Baptist Church your home. Um, the second thing we're going to um, cover here, Danielle, is, is uh, the two offices. And this is uh, really important because we just recently went through this the past couple years in some restructuring. And the two offices are your typical pastor, or you may call or hear of them as elders. Uh, but here at First Baptist Church, we call them shepherds. And so you have pastor shepherds and you have your, your deacons uh, or deaconesses. And so we're going we're gonna to ask uh, Pastor Ron to hop in and, and help answer uh, a question for us. And I'm, I'm going to ask Pastor Ron this question. Where in the New Testament are the two offices identified for the church? And what is the role of a pastor or shepherd and the deacons within the church? Brendan, you've asked me, where in the New Testament are the two offices identified of the church? In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14, the Apostle Paul talks about uh, how God gave to the church apostles and prophets and evangelists, shepherds or pastor, pastor teachers, to equip the church for the work of ministry. 
You also asked me what is the role of the pastor, shepherd, and elder, but also the role of the deacon. The overseer, shepherd, or elder, those words are kind of interchangeable, and pastor are all words used in the New Testament to describe the church leaders who are to give oversight and guidance to the ministries of the church. They are to equip the followers of Christ to be ministers of the gospel to the world. They are to look out for the spiritual growth and growth toward the maturity of the believers under their care. One strong biblical image is the, is the image of the shepherd and the sheep. The shepherd was to lead the flock to be uh, well-fed, and in this case, well-fed on the gospel of Christ, on the truth of the Bible, truth of God's word. So the shepherd was to lead to the feeding of the sheep. And in the case of Christ, Christ calls himself the bread of life, the water, the water of life. And we are to, to feed the congregation upon that bread and water. We are to see to the spiritual health of the congregation. It was a shepherd's role to, to take care when a, she when a sheep was hurt or and somehow needed to be taken care of physically, that that would be done. So the role of the shepherd then is to see to the spiritual health of, of the uh, people of the congregation. He is to protect them from false teachers and false doctrines as an old shepherd of the Bible times would protect from the wolf for the sheep, from the wolf for the sheep, take care, take care of them. Um, we're to do that, so to protect from false teachers and false doctrines, anything that would lead them astray from following Jesus. The shepherd is to lead by example and by teaching, not just word only, but live faithful themselves. Jesus is called the chief shepherd of the church in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Jesus as the chief shepherd or the head of the shepherds, and we others who are shepherds are to be seen as those who are under shepherds, who follow Christ first, but also help to lead people the same way that Christ would lead them. The qualifications of the shepherd, shepherd or elder is in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And let me read that for you. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the offers of overseer or shepherd, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, but lo nor a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. So a pretty demanding passage of scripture that says what we look for in the character of the overseer or the shepherd or the elder. I was also asked about the term deacon, and this is a different one. The Greek word deacon is basically a translation of a word that means one who serves. And the focus of the deacon is to be a servant. Deacons are servants of the church. They are to care for the temporal needs of individual believers, families, especially those who may need extra help, such as widows or, or widowers or people who are uh, incapacitated or handicapped in some way, especially give attention in those directions. In Acts chapter 6, verse 3, deacons are said that, that they are supposed to be people of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, and full of wisdom. The deacon qualifications are also presented in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. Let me read those for you. It says, Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And let them be also be tested first, then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives must also be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, 
managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and are also great and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So those are a list of deacon qualifications, similar to those of the overseer. Probably the main difference that we should notice is that in the in the overseer, the elder, the shepherd is to be a teacher who guides in truth and doctrine, and that's not necessarily so of the deacon who who is to lead through service. All right, thank you, Pastor Ron, for the uh, for the answer there. We we greatly appreciate uh, your wisdom. And um, so just to recap, pastor shepherds, they provide uh, the spiritual oversight for the church, uh, but we are to be among the flock. And the deacons, uh, deaconesses, are servant leaders of the churches, as he explained within the video there. Um, so that kind of wraps, uh, wraps a lot of this, um, this, well, wraps this series up. So. Right. But you know what I love the most about it, Brandon, what makes it easy for me to remember is the way that you've made the acrostic with the B-A-P-T-I-S-T, -T, which is Baptist. So can you, again, go through those one more time just so it's a little more solidified? Yes. So, again, we've, we've went through this in the previous classes, but to summarize Baptist, and we're, again, we're connecting the letter to doctrine. So B is biblical authority. The Bible is our, our, our sole foundation for our faith and, and our practice. We have A, which is autonomy of the local church, which means that we are an independent church, but that doesn't mean we isolate. We do associate with other churches uh, throughout this valley and throughout the state, but we do make our own decisions as a congregation that help minister to our local communities. Uh, obviously with, with uh, the Holy Spirit directing us. The P is priesthood of the believer. Priesthood of the believer is, is simply this, that we believe that there is no intermediary for us to have a direct line or conversation with, uh, with our God, which is Jesus, and we can directly pray to Jesus. Uh, T is, um, so we have the B, the A, the P, and now we're to the T, T is our uh, two ordinances. One is baptism, and second is the Lord's Supper. And to, to be baptized uh, is first you have to have salvation. You have to accept Christ into your life. And then the baptism is an expression. It's an outward expression of your inward faith of accepting Christ. Then you have the Lord's uh, table, which is what we call communion. And in order to participate with communion here at First Baptist Church, uh, you do have to have uh, Christ in your life. You have to be saved and accept Christ. Uh, you have the I, which is individual soul liberty. And individual soul liberty is simply the fact that um, God, the fall of man has, has um, it is given us as humans on this earth the ability to make our own decisions and God has given us that freedom. But the challenge is, is that we often want to make decisions on our own and for our own will versus God's will. And that's what God asks of us, ask of us is to make that decision. And, and, and we also have to remember that we do have that freedom, but we will suffer the consequence as well. So we have to make good decisions. Uh, the, the S is, uh, stands for saved. Uh, which is the, the importance of church membership, regenerate church membership, and uh, in, in joining a local church. Uh, T is your um, two offices, which is what we just talked about, uh, your, your pastor shepherds, and your deacons or deaconesses. So. Well, Brandon, that really brings it all full circle and concludes everything that we've been talking about with the Baptist distinctives and the Start Here class. So if I was someone and I had been watching this, where might I go from here? Or where might I head to find out more information? You know, we, we, we joked a little bit because what we're trying to decide is, all right, we have start here. Um, our next class might be called, what's next? <laughs> you know, so, but what's important, and, and again, what we're trying to establish here is we want to make people feel comfortable and, and first and foremost, 
having a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Savior. Secondly, if you're looking for uh, a church home, we want to make sure that you understand the content that has been provided here and know that that's what's going to be taught in our pulpit and throughout our church in our Sunday school classes. And so, but uh, to kind of, you know, summarize this in a whole, we want to use our church mission statement to uh, provide the foundation uh, for, for you and your walk with Christ. We want to know that we all are, are students and we continue to be students of the Bible. And so in our church, in our church mission state, we, statement, we first say you got to love Christ, which is first salvation and accepting Christ in your life. Second, you must learn Christ, which is what we're doing right now. It's a continual learning process. Even though this may be the basics of, of our foundation and our belief, it's still con information that we need to continue to reiterate with one another. And then simply, once we have this in our life, we want you to, to live like Christ once you learn more about him. So learn Christ, or love Christ, learn Christ, and live Christ is our mission statement here at First Baptist Church. Right. So. And you know, that this information is invaluable um, as a member of First Baptist Church, but also as just a believer of Christ. And if you are interested in having any of this information, um, we can give you this book. We will have them at the welcome desk here at the church, or you can always call and we can have one sent to you. Um, we are also going to be hopefully starting a new class soon. And um, you can call the church and see when that might be starting. And we're also going to have some time here soon where Brandon will be here at the church and you can meet with him one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of be watching your beacon for that kind of information. And you know, you know, Danielle, one thing I want to say too that this class really helps folks um, uh, do as well. And if you've attended this Start Here class, I, I think that you probably have a testimony that you can share with others throughout the church. But one thing that is important, and it's hard to do that on video here, but uh, we also provide an opportunity for people to understand everything that's going on and all the different ministries that are going on around the church. And we want you to get plugged in. And, and we want you to, to be able to, I mean, everybody has a purpose and uh, we want you to know that. And we want you to know that it's an important purpose for God. And trust me, we have so many things going on around this church that we hope that you get plugged in in order to, to fit the further, um, to help the ministry here. So. No, that's very good. I appreciate it, Brandon. And thank you for all you do here at First Baptist Church. Sure. Um, so let's go ahead and close in prayer. Almighty God, we just thank you for your loving hands that surround us and guide us and keep us. Um, help us to continue to learn your ways and your commandments, God, and apply those to our lives as we go out into this world. Um, help us to always be loving to those around us and honest and careful. And thank you, God, for just your word. And um, help us to continue to um, love you, learn you, and continue to grow us in you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.